Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa, I read, and welcome to my channel, and today I'm starring a 24 hour reading vlog. I've been wanting to do a reading vlog, like a 24 hour one, for a while now, so I don't think I've really done one before, so I'm really excited to do it. As of right now, it is 6.30 at night in the evening, so my thought was to go from now until evening tomorrow. I may stretch it if I need to in order to like squish in as much reading as possible within 24 hours. So I thought this was the perfect time to start something. I'm going to be reading a Harlequin story. I have A Runaway Temptation. This is written by Maureen Child and this is book one in this series. Um, this is a Harlequin Desire. I guess from my understanding of Harlequins, they have different like lines or series. So this is Desire series, but within that series, there is different series. So this one is the Texas Cattlemen's Club Bachelor Auction. I have this one. I only own two of these Harlequins. I found one um, through my library. And if I end up liking this like mini series within the Desire line, um, I would have to buy some other ones. And I'm learning if you are behind on Harlequins, they're kind of hard to find. Like, you can always buy them on ebook, but you can't just buy them brand new. Like, Harlequin only runs the more current titles, if that makes any sense. You can't just buy this off of Harlequin. That's what I've learned so far. So, but I'm excited to give Harlequins a try. Like, I have read some in the past. I think I would have to pick the right genres and the right tropes and stuff, so we'll see. But from what I gather, there's Shelby and Caleb, and I think she's a runaway bride, and she runs into Caleb, who's a rancher, and he, like, takes her in. I think that's all I know. So it's super short. Like, that's what these are like. It is just over 200 pages. So we'll see how far I get. I'm a slow reader, so we'll see. Um, but this is what I'm going to read. So it's 8.30, I read about 80 pages, like I said, I'm like a slow reader, so. But I'm kind of impressed that I read that much in like a couple hours. But we're following Shelby and she's a runaway bride. So her fiance turned out to not be the person that she kind of fall, fell in love with. He said he's a cowboy and everything and even though he's from Texas, he doesn't actually like own a ranch or anything, he's more of a lawyer and even though his family owns a ranch and everything. It's mostly like they rent out the land to actual farmers and they live off the proceeds. So I don't know. So Shelby is engaged. I think his name is Jared. And even though they had a, like a whirl, whirlwind romance, he didn't turn out to be the person that she thought he was. Um, his family is very overbearing. This is set in like a small town called Royal and they're kind of like like a famous family from there I guess you can say and his mother is like obsessed with making sure they have a good reputation and so she's 
specifically really really hard on Shelby to the point of almost cruel and so it's her wedding day and she just decides to run because she cannot stand the thought of marrying Jared, marrying into the family who has been really awful to her really. And then we have Caleb and he is a rancher. He's a rancher and he was engaged to someone and she ran away from his wedding. <laughs> Um, and is now married to her to his brother. So he has very complicated feelings about obviously runaway brides. Um, but while she was running away, she bumps into him and she asks him to take take her with him and help her. And she's, you know, you are actually sympathetic to the bride. I wasn't really sure if I would feel sympathetic, but I do, and so um, the author's done a good job making you feel for her and her situation. We're at the point where where she's staying with Caleb at his ranch. He has like this big sprawling ranch house and he I guess works with I don't know what kind of ranching he does, but you know, he has horses and he does work around the ranch and stuff and I think he has like oil, an oil company or something like that. So yeah, I am really, really liking it. I I'm learning that I do like cowboy romances and I'm from Alberta so I'm not like that surprised <laughs> um, I didn't grow up in Alberta but I'm acquainted with the culture and so there are some similarities to Texas to Texas so yeah I am enjoying it oh and there's this other like parallel not parallel there's an additional story in here where we're following an older couple who fell in love when they were young but their parents like forced them to separate she was forced to tell her lover that she doesn't actually love him and was like forced to not be with him um and they're like in their 60s now and i guess <laughs> their families are kind of like rival families where they're not friendly they're kind of enemies and people from each families they don't they're not friendly you shouldn't be together and so i guess i think it was her grandson and his granddaughter are like making moon eyes at each other and <laughs> they've decided to work together to break them apart. Obviously that's not going to happen and I'm kind of like charmed by that second romance in here so I'm just like really enjoying it. Shelby she's actually an organizer like a professional organizer and so she's decided to like work for her room and board by um, organizing Caleb's things. I guess his mother passed and his house is like full of stuff that he needed to go through but he never did and so she's busy working with that and yeah I'm just like enjoying it I think what I like about Harlequins is how short they are it kind of just like gets to the point there's no fluff it's just like quick romance and I'm really really enjoying it and obviously Caleb and Shelby are attracted to each other to each other but they can't quite do anything because of the situation so I'm just gonna keep reading I might have a bath or something um, and I don't know if I'll finish it, but maybe I will tonight. That'd be kind of cool if I finish this and then I can maybe pick up the next one. I kind of like that idea. So I got to page 156. It's like 10.45. I'm probably going to read for like another 15 minutes and then go to bed. Um, but I won't be finishing it tonight, but I'll pick up with my progress tomorrow morning.
Okay, so it is 10 o'clock in the morning and I finished Runway Temptation. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. So I do recommend it. This was an interesting experience though. I have read Holoquins, but I don't know. Like, I'm just... I liked it. But like, you can tell that it was really short and that it was more surface level and things kind of like progress a lot quicker than I think in a normal full length novel. And I was thinking even more like... This is like a mass market paperback. Like it's the same size and this is like 200 pages. It's so much shorter than like a traditional book. Like if it, when a traditional book, like a, like a trade paperback or even a hardcover gets released in like mass market, the amount of pages is even longer. So this is like even shorter than 200 pages if that makes sense if this was like traditionally published in a trade paperback this would probably be like 150 pages so it's really short there isn't enough time to have things go even deeper but I still really liked it like I'm not saying it's a bad thing but I just noticed that and so you kind of have to know that going in so you're not judging it too much so I did really like it though I get I'm giving it four stars the other thing I want to mention is that I find annoying <laughs> Like from my experience with um, Harlequin so far is that there's a lot of cameos and there's a lot of like setting up other characters. That's at least how I read them. There was an instance in here where we meet a couple and they talk about their kids and like we learn a, a bit of their backstory of how they met. And like that's the end of the inter interaction. And so the only way I read that is like okay that must have been like some characters from like another series because I know um the what is this Texas Cattlemen's Club I know there's like other like series featuring that club and so I don't know it's just weird I don't like it because it just like pulls me out of the story um and so I'm just gonna have to get used to that the other thing I realized <laughs> after reading this is that I need to change my relationship with Harlequins I was originally going to read like all the books in this like series specifically and I was going to do that with the Madeiras family saga and the Western Marland series and I think I just can't do that because when I thought about having to try and find these books I it's just hard to come by it's hard to get these Harlequin doesn't even like print these anymore. I think they only print the stories that are being released. You can buy them on ebook and things like that. I don't think I'm gonna do it. It's six dollars per issue on ebook. That's a lot of money for like a really short story. Um, and I could find them. I could find some through Hoopla and then the other books I can find are like on the other side of the city and it's just like it's just too much. <laughs> It's just too much. I need to have my my relationship with Harlequin needs to be how it's like made, which is you just pick them up randomly. You don't really read the whole series. You just like pick up a Harlequin and then read it and then be done with it, you know? I need to not read the entire series. So I think that's how I'm going to treat these books now is read them the way they were meant to be read just like whenever you want and out of order. So I'm removing those series from my TBR. It doesn't mean I won't ever read those books, but I'm not going to worry about reading them in order and like reading all of them. So I'm just going to read what I have because originally I was going to like scrounge up and try to find all these Harlequins, but I think that's too hard. Um, I'd rather just like go to the thrift store and find some Harlequins that I find inter like that I'm interested in and just read them. I think I would rather have that relationship with Harlequin books. So I do still have some more though. And I have one more specifically in this series. Um, it's in this bind up where there's a Brenda Jackson story, which is a Westermoreland, and then His Until Midnight. So I'm going to read His Until Midnight, which is by Reese Ryan. I think it's number four in this little series. I found the audiobook on Hoopla, and I'm going to go for a walk before it gets too hot. And I'm going to start listening to it. So that's what the cover looks like. It's five hours. I'm going to listen to it. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go for a walk, hopefully in some shady areas, and then I'll check in with you.
Hi, so it's much later and it's one o'clock now and I went for my walk and unfortunately the audiobook just like didn't work. I find that I struggle with Hoopla audiobooks sometimes because they just like are just bad quality and this was like crackling a lot um, to the point where it was hard to understand. Um, I don't know if anyone else has a problem with Hoopla audiobooks sometimes but and I know it wasn't my earphones because I switched to music and that was so much better. So I went for a nice long walk. It's been a long time since I've done that. Came back, cleaned up, and had lunch. Um, I did read one chapter of His Until Midnight. That cover I think is supposed to be for the Brenda Jackson one. But I'm reading His Until Midnight. So it looks like it's going to be... A friends to lovers romance we're following tessa and ryan and they've been best friends like growing up it's been her and him and then tessa's brother it's kind of been the three of them but it's always been tessa and ryan they've always been best friends and now that they're older you know i think they both kind of like have feelings for each other or attracted to each other but they feel like they can't say anything and it's looking like this auction is gonna like move the plot along so i guess the series is featuring this bachelor auction the first book was talking about setting this auction up this is book four in the series and the auction hasn't happened but it's about to so they were talking about it ryan is choosing not to be a part of it but it sounds like tessa may actually bid on someone and so he doesn't like that idea so maybe he's gonna be He's probably going to be a bachelor in this thing and maybe she will bid on him or something like that. That's kind of the groundwork work that I'm seeing. So I like it so far. It's fun. She's kind of like a tomboy. He is a guy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he does. I'm not really clear on that yet. It's only been one chapter. But so far I'm liking it. So I'm really, really tired though after that big walk and I didn't sleep well last night. So... I'm probably going to read a little bit more and then have a nap and then hopefully finish it today. I just finished chapter five and like I said before they do a lot of like cameos so they did the cameos from book one but I was like so confused because I'm like why are you calling him Carter McKenzie because they said Carter McKenzie and Shelby Arthur and Shelby Arthur is the heroine from this one but the hero is Caleb so did they just like get his name wrong? <laughs> I just, I don't know. That just like really annoyed me because I'm like, who's Carter? So they couldn't even like get his name right. I just think that's so funny. <laughs> So I did finish, what is it called? I don't remember, His Until Midnight. So I did finish that last night. I really liked it. Kind of took me by surprise. I was expecting a certain romance. And it was, like, it's a friends to lovers romance. And then her brother gets sick, Tessa, her brother gets sick, and he was supposed to be a bachelor in the bachelor auction. And I thought she was going to maybe convince Ryan, and then she bid on Ryan. But instead, Tessa volunteers herself, and so she is the one who is standing up at the auction. They kind of make it where they have an extra bachelorette for the fellas kind of thing it was kind of like a surprise at the auction and ryan who is the love interest her best friend is not happy about the situation and so he ends up bidding on her which is all fun and everything there's a bit of a scandal that happens and the club asks ryan and tessa 
to pose for the paper or something like that because there was a reporter there and they wanted to do a story on one of the couples and so um to avoid scandal to make them not focus on the scandal but on something else they asked if someone could come and follow them on their date and so ryan plans like this romantic getaway for him and tessa and this one is definitely a lot steamier than the other one i read i really liked this author's writing a lot i liked this one more than um this one i still like this author's writing but i think i would like reese ryan a lot more and i just really liked this story i liked how how they finally came together kind of moved past this barrier they were each putting up and them trying to figure things out but i did really really like it and i liked it a lot more than the other one i don't know what else to say though because it's so short i liked their getaway and you know it's short and sweet right just what you expect from a harlequin so i'm almost tempted to give it five stars um, I did just like really enjoy it and I liked it a lot more than the first one so I may have to give it four, five stars. I'm just kind of surprised because I kind of assumed like Harlequins would just like be sitting always at a four or less but I really liked it so I definitely recommend that one and I'm excited to read more from Reese Ryan. I think she mostly writes Harlequin romances um, so I'll have to keep my eyes for those. So that is it for this reading vlog. I hope you enjoy coming along with me for 24 hours. Um, I do plan to make more videos like this. So if you've read any of these books before, comment down below. No, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions about them. If you read Harlequins, let me know which ones are your favorites. Feel free to recommend some Harlequins. I'm always looking for new recommendations. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not done so. And you know what? I want you to keep reading. Bye!